Schramsberg was founded in 1862 uh, by Jacob Schramm. He would have said Jakob Schramm. And he and his family were here for about 50 years up until the time of Prohibition, at which time the winery was closed. It remained closed actually for 50 years. So then in 1965, my parents revived the, the Schramsberg property. That was the year that the Schramsberg sparkling wine brand was born. And that was the year I was born. The first step in making sparkling wines is to make the, the base wines. The three traditional varieties used to make champagne in the Champagne region of France are Chardonnay as a white grape and then Pinot Meunier and Pinot Noir as red grapes. Here at Schramsberg and others actually here in California who are making this type of wine typically just use Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Compared with making still wines, uh, the grapes that we're going to be using to make our sparkling wines will be picked at lower sugar levels and at higher acidity. Here at Schramsberg today we're working with some 85 different blocks with which we'll make just over 200 individual base wines and that gives us a better overall package. This type of winemaking is very blending oriented. Here after we've made our, our still wines, albeit 11% alcohol, we will then add a little yeast, add a little sugar and we'll go through a second fermentation, this time in a bottle. Uh, and it'll bump the alcohol up about 1%, also forming a little carbon dioxide gas inside the bottle, which is the effervescence, the bubbles. Here we can see the yeast that has caused a second fermentation to happen inside this bottle. The wine is bottled in the spring following the fall harvest with a little bit of yeast and sugar. Uh, we then uh, stack the bottles in these stacks where the second fermentation will happen typically within two or four weeks. And then it's a matter of aging the wine in contact with the yeast sediment for a period of two years, maybe six years, in some odd cases ten or more years, uh, where more of the nutty uh, caramelized uh, baked bread type of characters evolve. Welcome to the finishing or to the disgorging room. Uh, this is where the last steps in the process occur. Uh, in a full business day, if you will, we can do about a thousand cases a day. From this point here, uh, where the bottles come to the neck freezer, and again here we've got a uh, plug of ice now containing the yeast sediment. We'll pop the cap, the shooting the ice plug out. So here I have my disgorging tool. We can flip the bottle right side up, check out the ice plug containing the sediment and then pop, whoop, don't want to lose too much pressure there. And the bottle of sparkling wine is ready to have dosage added to it. So this is the dosage. Again, a mixture of sugar and wine. I'm going to add about 15 milliliters of this. The wine that we use in the dosage is also a very key ingredient, actually. Some of the old barrels that we saw up above are there to age wine so they can be used to make a special little touch in the, in the finished blend. Generally, we don't do it with a pipette, but in this example, uh, we will. This, of course, happens a little faster when done by machine. About 15 milliliters, but voila, that's about it. I'll then go ahead and put the bottle on the line, and what's going to happen is just the bottom half of the cork is going to be pinched right over the mouth of the bottle, and then a little hammer will tap it right in. And there's your cork bottle. Thank you for coming to learn about how we make our sparkling whites.